Good morning, everybody. This is your third installment of Physical Security. Today we're going to be talking about alarms and system integration. All right, alarm sensor system integration. There are three basic types of alarm systems we need to be familiar with. The first one are the intrusion alarm, or what we call IDS, uh, intrusion detection systems. They signal the entry of persons into a facility or an area while the system is in operations. It can be as uh, basic as what you have in your home, your uh, ADT type systems, all the way up to multiple uh, types of sensors working in integration with each other. We have fire alarm systems. Um, they have different ways, different sensors. We briefly discussed those back whenever we were putting together our, our emergency plan, talked about fire alarms. And then we have special use alarms. They warn of a process reaching a dangerous temperature, high or low, of the presence of toxic fumes, or that a machining is running too fast. Okay, those are special use alarms. <coughs> okay. All alarm systems have a detector, a device that is designed to respond to a certain change in condition. It can be anything from uh, infrared to motion detection, you know, uh, uh, high frequency, um, you name it, we got it. We'll, we'll talk about the detectors in just a minute. Uh, it also needs a sending device, a device that sends a signal about whatever is sent to some other location, and an enunciator. Something to warn whoever's manning the uh, alarm console that something is amiss. It's uh, it's very basic. It can be anything from a bell to a buzzer to uh, flashing on your computer screen that you have a, a problem. <coughs> okay, a true uh, alarm systems are classified according to the kind of uh, protection they provide. They can either be a perimeter alarm, like you alarm your fence line, somebody cutting through the fence, climbing over the fence. There are alarm sensors out there that if you lean against the fence, they'll set off an alarm. And you have control system, integrated systems, that will slew your CCT cameras to the point of that alarm. It'll look at that zone <coughs> and uh, be able to coordinate with the alarm sensor and the camera system all at one time so that whenever an alarm goes off, you're looking at what the problem is right there on the spot. Then you have area alarms. These are usually uh, passive alarm systems or passive sensors like your infrared detection, uh, your uh, high frequency detection sensors, and things like that. They cover a broad area and uh, they're uh, Sorry, mine went on vacation this morning. Forgot to take me with it. Um, never mind. I'll, I'll get to it when we get into the sensors. Uh, and you have point alarms. These are special sensors that uh, you put on one point that pick up any adverse change or any changes set within the perimeters. Like you put a, a motion sensor on a safe. That's the, what a point alarm is, a point sensor. Uh, perimeter protection focuses primarily, primarily on the outer boundary of your premises. Okay, Now, whenever you're setting up your fence line, we discussed that uh, on Monday, you might want to consider putting in motion sensors on the fence or uh, uh, a sensor that uh, runs a, a microcurrent through the fence line or through a, a sensor wire that shows that it's being uh, tampered with. So. You use this on your outer perimeter. The problem with using uh, sensors on your fence line is you have animal incursions that could set it off, could uh, have a high frequency of false alarms, or not false alarms, but uh, uh, non-adversarial alarms, as with uh, animals uh, leaning up against your fence. So if you have a horse farm next to your perimeter, it might not be a good idea to put sensors on it, but you want to have cameras on it. Area protection detects an intruder in a selected area, such as a main aisle in a building or in a strategic passageway. Uh, you can have uh, them going into uh, not only passageways, but you can set up an alarm 
in a, a sensitive area like a skiff so that unauthorized access to the skiff you'll know that somebody's in there. Point detection signals an alarm when an intrusion is made to a special location it is also referred to as a spot or object protection as with the safe or a skiff in our case. <coughs> All systems shall initiate an alarm under any of the following conditions. This is it. Sensing a condition for which it has been designed to detect. If you have an infrared uh, uh, sensor set up and somebody breaks the infrared beam, then it's going to sound an alarm. If you have motion detectors in there, uh, microwave detectors, if somebody moves around in there, it senses because it's going to bounce off the movement and it's going to set it off. They have a primary power failure or and a secondary power that does not take over properly. Okay, if you lose power, they're going to sound an alarm, and um, you know that's one of the things you have to have a backup plan for. If you lose your power, you need to have a secondary power source that will kick in. Uh, the other thing is a tamper switch or a triggering mechanism is uh, is activated. Now, a tamper switch can be anything from uh, an accelerometer put on your fence line that senses motion of the fence line. Or if you cut the chain link on the fence and there's a microcurrent going through it, it'll sense it and trigger the, the alarm mechanism. Okay, let's talk about some uh, alarm sensors here. We have the electromechanical devices. These are the old uh, balanced magnetic switches. Triggers an alarm when the circuit is interrupted. Now, how those work is uh, there is uh, two magnets that are reading each other, and if they move too far apart, they no longer sense each other, and that interrupts uh, the balance mechanism inside the magnet and opens the circuit and sends, when it's an open circuit, it sends an alarm to the control panel. You also have photoelectric devices. These use a beam of light, usually infrared, and whenever it's interrupted, ta-da, you get an alarm. Pressure devices is nothing more than uh, uh, whenever you step on it, it, uh, it, sent, it creates a contact because you have two wafer-thin uh, uh, sensors in there, so whenever they're pushed into contact with each other, it activates the alarm. Motion detector is operated by radio frequency to form a wave pattern. Any alteration in that wave pattern will trigger an alarm. <coughs> I would, tried to find uh, some good stuff here for you all to look at, but that's the old balance magnetic switch up there. You can see how it looks whenever you take it apart. Pretty simple device. Okay, alarms and sensors. Ultrasonic motion detectors, same as radio frequency, activates when motion is disturbed. Uh, you actually have new sensors coming out on the market now that uh, detect uh, air pressure changes, which is really good for high uh, value uh, uh, for vaults and stuff like that. Any air motion that you create while moving through the, the field there will actually set the alarm off. You have passive infrared motion detector. We just talked about that. Sonic alarm, known, uh, known as a noise detector. It picks up any... Uh, you set it for uh, specific uh, uh, decibels, okay? If, it, if uh, something happens in the uh, vicinity of the, the sensor that exceeds the lowest decibel level, it will activate an alarm. You usually put these in, uh, in and around uh, safes so that anybody trying to manipulate a safe or cut into a safe or blow up a safe, it will sound the alarm. Vibration detector is nothing more than a contact microphone that is attached to an object. Any sound while that thing is activated will sound an alarm. Capacitance alarm system, referred to as proximity alarm, triggered when an electromagnetic field is interrupted. That's our old balanced magnetic uh, switches. Now we're going to talk about fire alarms. Why do we need to know about fire alarms? Because fire safety is rolled into the security department as in nine, ten, nine cases out of ten. So you're going to need to know about uh, fire alarm systems. 
Uh, fire goes through four stages of development. Each stage is more dangerous than its predecessor. In second stage, invisible products of combustion are given off. No smoke or flame is visible. Everybody remember this from a couple of weeks ago, I hope. <coughs> Smoldering stage, smoke is now visible, but no flame or heat is in evidence. Flame stage, we have actual fire. Flames and smoke are visible. And then the heat stage, heat is intense and growing. Now, we have several sensors we can talk about to, to address each one of those stages. You have the ionization detector. It operates when it is exposed to those invisible products. Okay, Ionization detector, invisible products. I'm stomping my foot. Um, Photoelectric smoke detector, the, it's what you got in your house. It's the smoke alarms you have in your house. A beam of light is transmitted to a cell. When that source is interrupted, the unit will sound an alarm. Okay, or in what we call it at my house, the dinner is ready bell. Okay, infrared flame detector. Now this actually picks up the 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 emissions, the light emissions from flames, and it will sound the alarm. When you've got flames, boom, there it is. Thermal detector senses a temp, senses the temp as it climbs, and when it reaches a predetermined level will activate and send a signal to the control panel. Okay, fire sensors. Now we've got the sensors done, let's talk about enunciator units. Shall be so designed when connected to a detection circuit, they provide a means to remotely monitor the sensor conduct conduction and control the operation of the detection circuit. Not only does it uh, sound the alarm whenever something happens. It's constantly checking the status of the sensors. Um, if you lose a sensor, it'll sound an alarm. If the, the signaling uh, pathway is interrupted, it'll sound an alarm. So it's always checking its sensors. A tamper alarm shall be generated when the line between the enunciator and the detector is open, as I said. Shall be electronically compatible with detectors and circuit supervisor. Okay, that doesn't mean somebody standing there is controlling the circuit. That is a module in the uh, enunciator panel that constantly uh, checks the status of the sensors. Okay, moving on. Enunciator units. A panel may have an access secure switch and an alarm reset switch. I, you know, almost everyone. Uh, I've ever worked with does and the first thing uh, the uh, watch commander does is reach over and hit the alarm reset switch. Too many false alarms. You want to have an SOP in place that says they must send somebody to check the alarm and then hit the alarm reset switch. It's okay to silence the alarm as long as you are sending somebody to look at it. Okay. An alarm shall create a lock-on condition to be displayed by both audible and visual means. Used to be all you had was a bell sounding, you silenced the bell, and, and it really didn't do any good. Nowadays we have very sophisticated control centers that will tell you where the alarm is, uh, bring up a visual display, and hopefully you have an integrated security system where you can also uh, slave a camera to that area and watch that zone. Um, if you don't, you need to advocate for it really hard. Uh, all alarm and notification units will require manual re restoration, and uh, you need to have procedures on how to reset the system. Okay, for a false alarm. Uh, whenever I can't stress this too much, you should not. Uh, respond to an alarm simply by resetting the alarm. You should investigate every alarm that comes into the control center. You should physically check it every time. Okay. Um, she'll have a means of silence the audible from a particular zone during a pr prolonged alarm condition because if you got a bell ringing behind you, you can't focus on finding out what's going on. So silencing alarm is okay as long as you don't reset the, the system simply because you think it's a false alarm. It should be checked, then reported, and then you can reset the system. All alarm systems should have backup power. 
uh, either battery or a generator or something. All alarm systems should be one of the primary systems that comes back online for emergency operation. Okay? Uh, individual sensors will not provide security protection unless they are integrated into a closed system that will transmit the individual systems to one or more processing locations or recording units. Okay, you can't just put an alarm on a door and go home at night. Uh, a lot of, I'm, I'm sure we've all walked into the store that has that red bell hanging on the wall in the back of the store for whenever somebody breaks in and it's called a local alarm. Unless somebody hears that alarm, there's no way you can get action to the site. That's called a proprietary alarm system, uh, meaning it only goes off at the location that's happening. Then you have uh, uh, alarm systems that go to, like, your ADT home security systems. They set off an alarm at a control center for ADT. They send uh, units to that. And then you have what is called uh, uh, your own control system where you have your own response force, and it's located in your facility. And when the alarms go off, you know what zone, you know what's going on, you're familiar with the territory. It's one I urge for any uh, high security facility. <coughs> sensors and the array are one part of a protection system. Two other elements are software and personnel. Okay, you can have access control systems uh, where you do your swipe card, your pin access, whatever uh, access control system you're using set into your alarm system. So if somebody tries to go through your access control point, there it sounds an alarm and you can respond to it. Personnel are usually your roving patrol security system or security personnel that will respond to alarms. Um, one thing you have to understand about alarm systems, they are not uh, a standalone system. You have to have a guard force that will respond to the alarm system. Alarm systems alone do not provide adequate uh, protection for an intrusion. You have to be able to respond to the alarm. You can't just write down alarm went off in the book and ignore it. Okay, They do not provide total protection. So you need to balance uh, your alarm system with your, your uh, personnel levels. I know a lot of people are under the, the impression that uh, you can reduce your uh, guard force at night because nobody's in the building. Actually, you need to increase your guard force at night and increase your roving patrols at night because nobody's in the building. During the day, you can reduce your guard staff to access control and uh, a roving patrol. But at night, when nobody's there, you don't have all your employees there who are on your security team already because they bought into our security training, giving you that extra set of eyes. So you need to increase your guard force at night and work in conjunction with your alarm system. Method of alarm termination. You have local alarms. You have to go in, manually reset it, shut it off. Central station alarms are the ones that uh, will go to, like, the police department or ADT or someplace like that. They'll send somebody, and then they'll report, and then the alarm's reset. Direct termination in a business or an industrial facility is proprietary alarm. You need to develop your S SOPs on how to terminate the alarm, usually by I'm sending somebody to look, find out what's going on, reporting back, and then I can terminate the alarm. You can actually set it up so that you have a local alarm. Let's say you have uh, a safe in a safe area inside your high security area. You have a local alarm goes off, that's great. It'll sound a bell right there or an enunciator of some kind, you know, a buzzer, and that'll scare, attempt to scare off. It also goes over to uh, your uh, outside agency, like the police department or the FBI or whoever's going to be at the central station, and it can go off in your proprietary control center. So you can do all three of those in combination, okay? The central location. This is a facility set up to monitor alarms indicating fire, intrusion, and problems in the industrial process. Now, remember, we had that third set of alarms that specialized that looks at manufacturing, and you want to 
have one central location for the enunciator to go off in. So we can uh, dispatch the appropriate people to that location. Now, if it's an intrusion, we want to send our security forces. If it's a mechanical problem or we got uh, toxic gas being released in an area and that alarm is going off, we want to send our HSET team in there. If it's a fire, we want to respond with uh, firefighters. Boom. So everything goes into your central location. Okay. Any questions on that? Good. Proprietary system, the function, it functions the same way as your central, um, except it is owned and operated by the facility and is located inside the facility. Response to all alarms are by the facility's own security or fire personnel. Since the system is monitored locally, the response time to the alarm is considerably reduced. Okay. Okay. All right. Local alarm system. Here we are again. Ooh, I messed that slide up. The sensors activate a circuit that in turn activates a horn, a siren, even a flashing light located in the immediate vicinity fitted with the alarm. They're most useful for fire alarm systems since they alert personnel to evacuate the endangered area. Not so good for intrusion detection, but can be used for that that uh, can be used for that. Okay? Auxiliary system. In this system, the installation circuits are led to a local police or fire departments by leased telephone lines. This is how old this material is. Uh, the dual responsibilities for a circuit, meaning both your facility and either the police and fire department have responsibility for maintaining the, and um, this circuit, and now ADT and all these other uh, security companies out there. That that's what an auxiliary system is. Um, problem with these is there's a high incidence of false alarms very in public. As a matter of fact, um, if you have a lot of these alarm services companies, what they do is when an alarm goes off at your facility or at your house, if it's a false alarm because you triggered it and they dispatch the police, after a while if it's just continuous false alarms, the police will not stop, will stop responding quickly or they will stop responding at all, okay? Um, so you really have an issue whenever you're working with local uh, auxiliary systems to ensure that everybody's trained on the system, they don't accidentally set it off, or they call the alarm center or whoever is monitoring this and let them know that you're entering the building. I was at a facility two weeks ago where the person had to go in on a weekend to get something out. They had to call the alarm company saying, I'm entering the building. I need you to reset the alarm and I will call you when I leave the building. It's very unpopular. It's very hard to use and I wouldn't recommend it for a high security facility. Okay, a local alarm by chance system. As I said earlier, the local alarm goes off. If there's no one to hear it, it doesn't get reported. There is no response. Very popular in the 40s and 50s around banks and stuff like that. It only works in small towns where the bell wakes everybody up and they start calling the cops. <coughs> so that's the downside to it. Uh, dual alarm system. The system is set to dial a predetermined phone number when the alarm is activated. When the phone is answered, a recording states that an intrusion is, pro is in progress at the location that is fitted with the alarm systems. This is great, except it also has a high uh, false alarm rate. So, but the good news is, if it's going to your house, you're the security guy, you pick it up, you can call your local patrol force, say, I just got notification, we have an intrusion alarm, da da da, check it out, and then call the police if it's, if it's a real alarm. Any questions on alarms? There's not much to them, folks. The hard part of uh, alarm systems is integrating them with the rest of your security uh, system, your access control, your uh, fire response, and getting the SOPs written on, written on how to respond to the alarms. 
Hey, Royce, on, uh, you're talking about the false alarms. I know some cities now start charging, uh, charging uh, occupants or residents Twenty-five or fifty dollars or whatever for coming out for false alarms and stuff. So that will get you have you get your alarm fixed if you have to have the cops keep coming out, or uh, you have to come out of pocket. Yes, that that's true. And I haven't heard it being that low. I I've heard as high as two hundred dollars a response. Oh really? <laughs> yeah, I don't have an alarm system in my house except for Smith and Wesson. I can't afford the cops coming. All right, I'm going to be sending out. Uh, a link to Stefan and hopefully gets it out. We finally got the web page opened up for uh, y'all to do your makeups. Okay, uh, we're putting these recordings on a web page and uh, it has a login block on it. Totally ignore it. Just go up to the tabs and select the course you want to review. Okay, I'm going to leave these up on the website until mid May. Even after we finish this, if there's a section that uh, y'all want to go back and visit, it will be there. Okay? Any other questions? Thank y'all for being so patient with me today. Uh, I'm a little hoarse, and, and I apologize for that. So y'all have a great day. Stay out of the snow. No snow fights. All right. Thank you. You have Thank a good you, day, sir. too. All right.